This is Shobha from Citizen News Service, and I welcome all of you on behalf of CNS. Warm greetings from all of us, and welcome to this very special webinar, which focuses on two major public health challenges, TB and diabetes. When both of them join hands, then public health consequences are even more severe and debilitating. Let's look at diabetes. 387 million people are affected globally by this disease, with 77% of cases in low and middle income countries where TB is also prevalent. And if we look at the TB data, TB is the second greatest infectious killer after HIV worldwide. In 2013, 9 million people fell ill with TB and 1.5 million died from the disease. Also, over 95% of TB deaths occur in low and middle income countries. Over the years, strong evidence has been coming in of the deadly association between TB and diabetes. But a lot more action needs to happen on the ground so that TB and diabetes collaborative activities get scaled up to avert this looming crisis. The first ever Global TB Diabetes Summit is being organized by the International Union Against Tuberculosis and Lung Disease in Bali, Indonesia, just uh, in the beginning of next month, with lead partners such as World Diabetes Foundation and Ministry of Health in Indonesia as its patron. Uh, we had our moderator as uh, uh, Mr. Ashok Ramsarup, uh, who is an award-winning journalist from South African Broadcasting Corporation. And I hope he joins us live from Durban. Uh, I do not know where he, uh, whether he's online as yet or not. But before I hand over to him, I would like to make a few announcements. All participants are requested, as always, to please send us your questions while panelists are presenting. No need to wait till the end. Just type your questions in. Or you may raise your virtual hand. You will see on your screen during the question and answer session. And I also request both the panelists to please finish their presentation in time that is uh, 10 minutes, so that we have good time left for question and answer session. Uh, I do not, is Ashok there? Ashok Ramsarup, are you there? Okay, it seems he's not online, so I would welcome my, our first speaker and panelist, Dr. K. S. Rajdeva, who is Additional Deputy Director General of Central TV Division, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare in India. He has not only been involved with several studies at the Central TB Division, but have, has also been very, very active in rolling out TB and diabetes collaborative activities. Over to you, Dr. Sarseva. How do we uh, share the screen for the presentation, or you will show the presentation? Uh, I think the screen okay. will be, yes to be shared. Okay, show my screen. Okay. So uh, I'll uh, basically uh, speak about TB diabetes collaborative activities in the Indian context. And Anthony is uh, talking about in the uh, context of the uh, global context. So I, I restrict my uh, uh, presentation more on the, uh, the collaborative Dr. activities. Dr. Sajdeva, can I, can I interrupt a little bit here? I'm sorry, Please. I should have said that uh, Dr. Harris is due to some medical reasons, he will not be here today. Uh, last moment okay. he said he, ha he has some medical problems, so he may not be there. So you may continue with whatever you want to talk about. Okay, okay, okay. sure, sure, sure. Thank you, thank you. So sorry for the interruption. Okay, it's okay. So, uh, the TB diabetes scenario in India is uh, that uh, we have about 2.6 billion uh, prevalent cases of TB in our country and about 66 million cases of diabetes uh, in India out of uh, about 380 million 
in the globe, uh, around the globe. The diabetes uh, prevalence in TB in India is as high as about 13% uh, uh, that we have seen in our studies. And currently our program for uh, non-communicable diseases, that is diabetes, is functional in about, about 180, districts in the, 180 districts in the country. Uh, the, what we have also seen is that the proportion of TB burden which is attributable to the diabetes is about what we call as a population attributable attribut fraction is about 10%, is about 10%. And uh, the risk of diabetes, uh, TB in diabetics is about 3.1 times the risk in the general population. Now, to why India is concerned about uh, TB and diabetes is because, uh, one, India has a very large population base of about 1.3 billion people, out of which 40% are infected with the mycobacterium tuberculosis. So that translates into about 480 million TB infected uh, people in our country and we also have uh, 66 million who are who have diabetes mellitus and of these uh, those co-infected we have about 2.1 million incident TB cases every year and about 13 percent of them are diabetic as well so that's the uh, uh, convergence of these two epidemics India is also known as the diabetic capital of the world and every fifth diabetic uh, patient in the world is an Indian and every fourth TB patient in the world is an Indian. We have uh, conducted several studies to uh, see the association between diabetes and TB in India. One of such early studies in the state of Kerala has shown that uh, diabetes is as high as about 50% actually varied from 40 to 50% in the state of uh, Kerala and uh, this was done on the method of what is known as a glycosylated hemoglobin. The other studies from other parts of the country, one uh, study from the tribal population in South India has shown a diabetes TB uh, convergence of about 5% and another study in this uh, South India shows that to be about 17.1 percent. So that's overall almost 10 to 20 percent of TB patients in India are uh, diabetic. So these two, st three studies uh, show the convergence of the epidemic of TB and diabetes. What we have done as a country in uh, diabetes and TB collaborative activities that uh, we first organized a national stakeholders meeting in October 2011 and where there was a felt need that we should have a bi-directional screening for both the diseases on similar line as for the TB HIV uh, collaborative activities. Then in the year 2012 we conducted studies to assess the feasibility and this results of bi-directional TB diabetes mellitus screening within the routine healthcare settings across uh, 18 settings, 8 were tertiary level and 10 were TB units. In uh, February uh, 2015, again, we uh, had another consultative meeting for joint uh, TB diabetes collaborative activities. We have developed a collaborative framework. The framework is in implementation in around more than 100 districts in the country and being expanded to 180 districts where the uh, program for diabetes is currently operational. The feasibility pilot which we conducted in the year 2012 has shown a 13% uh, concordance of TB diabetes activities. Of th them, about 8% were people who already knew about their diabetes status. 5% were uh, those patients who were newly diagnosed with uh, diabetes. So the additional yield of TB diabetes collaborative activities is clearly in excess of about 5% uh, in, in, our, in our country. There are uh, variations across uh, different settings between states, between districts like diabetes is more in South India so the more uh, TB diabetes you see in South India. Similarly you see more of TB diabetes uh, activities due to referral bias in the tertiary care uh, settings. So in tertiary care hospitals the TB diabetes uh, convergence was about 16 percent as compared to about 9 percent in the TB units. Similarly, in the southern part of the India, it is about 20% versus 10% in the northern part of the India. 
these, uh, however, what these studies have clearly demonstrated that it is very, very much feasible to have a collaborative framework wherein more than 96% of the patients who were attending TB facilities were referred for diabetes uh, screening and then subsequently found diabetic were offered a uh, link up and uh, management of diabetes mellitus. However, the uh, reverse uh, framework wherein the diabetics are screened for TB uh, needs more strengthening. In our study, uh, we could screen about 50% of diabetics for TB in at least once in a year. And of those who were screened, uh, the uh, almost uh, 3 percent were found to uh, have uh, with found to be positive with TB yeah. symptoms, they were found to be positive with TB symptoms, and the yield was about 1 to 2 percent in them. So while the yield in uh, diabetics for TB in uh, percentage wise may be less, but considering a huge base of diabetics in our country, which is about 66 million, the yield uh, in absolute numbers will transfer into a large number of cases. Uh, moreover, what we have seen in diabetics, the chances of getting TB are about four to five times higher than in the general population. That's what our studies have also clearly demonstrated. So trans translated into K TB cases per 100,000 population, the way we've actually demonstrated our TB cases in the 100,000 population, what we have seen is that uh, the TB case rate in diabetics is about five times that of the general population. So that uh, score underscores the need for having a collaborative framework. However, what we require is more attention to detail of human resource requirements and uh, the medical recording and reporting part of it to improve the performance. The objective of the framework are to establish mechanism of collaboration between the uh, non-communicable disease control program and the TB control program for addressing the coexisting TB and diabetes mellitus comorbidity to improve screening and detection of active TB in cases in patients registered at NCD clinic and managed appropriately, to intensify early screening and diagnosis of diabetes mellitus in registered TB patients and managed appropriately, to establish surveillance monitoring and evaluation mechanisms. The service delivery coordination has activities to reduce burden of TB, uh, burden of diabetes among TB patients, and then the activities at, uh, targeted towards reducing burden of TB among diabetic patients. So to reduce burden of TB among diabetes, all uh, registered uh, diabetic patients, there is an intensified detection of active TB disease among diabetic patients, ensure TB infection control measures in healthcare settings where diabetes is managed, and ensuring TB treatment and management in comorbid patients. Similarly, uh, all TB patients in the screen for diabetes mellitus and we ensure diabetic management on TB patients. So this is the how we have uh, uh, shown the service delivery mechanism in a schematic way. So the TB patients uh, who is registered in a uh, PHI, at a PHI level he is screened with a random blood sugar. If the random blood sugar is more than 140 milligram per deciliter, then you do a second confirmatory test which is the fasting blood sugar and then decide whether the patient is diabetic or not. And offer an appropriate care and support. Similarly, diabetic patients are screened for TB with the four symptom complex, that is the fever, cough, no weight gain or night sweats, and if any of these symptoms is present, then they are referred to a diagnostic lab for diagnosis of TB, and if they are diagnosed as TB, then they are offered an appropriate TB care along with the diabetic care. The next few slides show the results of the collaborative mechanism which the program has established in the last few years. Few states are implementing uh, these mechanisms in true letter and spirit. Uh, Gujarat is one state where it is being implemented uh, in the entire state. And uh, they have a close screen close to 80,000 TB patients in the year 2014 of which about 4% were found to be diabetic and offered an appropriate diabetic care.
diabetic yielded a large number of diabetes mellitus cases which offered opportunities for earlier management and also improved the outcomes of TB treatment in such patients. Similarly, the performance across various districts in uh, Moradabad is uh, alluded in this slide. Again, we have the uh, convergence of the epidemic will vary, varies from district to district. So we see about 4% co uh, comorbidity in a few districts extending up to 10% comorbidity in few other districts. So again, there are large variation both at, within the states and also across the states in this TB diabetes comorbidity. There's a lot of work uh, which is uh, going on in the TB diabetes arena. We are scaling up TB diabetes collaborative activities to all the districts which are implementing such program for uh, non-communicable diseases. We are also streamlining the bilateral service linkages. There are standardized recording and reporting mechanisms which have been developed and the ultimate aim is to achieve the universal access to TB diabetic comorbidity care and support for those comorbidities. I thank you for your attention and uh, I'll be happy to take any queries which, which are there. Thank you, uh, thank you Dr. Sajdeva for uh, a very, very informative uh, presentation. Uh, we can have some questions directly. Uh, will Tina like to ask her question live? Will, Tina, would you like to ask your question? Or should I read it out? I have your question with me, but maybe it's better if you ask yourself. Tina. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, no, we can. can. Please introduce yeah. yourself, Tina. Yeah, I am Tina Thakkar. I am from the Asian Age and Deccan Chronicle newspaper. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to ask, uh, is diabetes fueling the spread of TB or uh, and is diabetes expected to surpass T uh, HIV as the most important risk factor for TB in India? Currently, if you look at the population attributable fraction, the diabetes is about 10% and HIV is about 16%. But given that the HIV uh, control program uh, functioning since about most, more than about two decades now, we have been able to control HIV to some extent. The rates are coming down. The, as such, the co-infection in India is particularly not very high compared to the rest of the world, especially I'm referring to Africa. So India, TB HIV co-infection is about 6%. The TB diabetes uh, co-infection that way is about 13%. The number of diabetics is also very high in India. It's about 66 million. So in, uh, and it's also anticipated that in uh, the non-communicable diseases will take over in uh, due course of time. So it's likely that uh, in about another next one or two decades, TB diabetes comorbidity may actually match or surpass TB HIV comorbidity. Have I answered your uh, question, Tina? Can you hear me? Yes, now we can hear yeah, you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the first question was, is diabetes fueling the spread of TB? Like, how, how are they connected? Uh, is it because of diabetes that one can have TB? Always. Uh, diabetes is also a condition where the immunity is impaired, so diabetes fuels to spread of TB to some extent. I mean, it causes early breakdown to TB, and once you break down early, and there are also chances that because of diabetes, you will have a higher uh, grade of TB or higher positivity for uh, sphere in, for the ARB bacilli in the in your sputum. So yes, diabetes will definitely fuel uh, propagation of TB. On the other hand, any uh, disease also is a uh, condition which promotes uh, diabetes. So TB in itself will promote hyperglycemia. So that's why the, uh, the diagnosis of diabetes and uh, these uh, constitutional diseases sometimes becomes difficult because TB in itself is a condition which will cause an increase in blood sugar. So that may be true diabetes, that may not be diabetes at all. When you treat TB, your blood sugar level may come to normal. So TB uh, also is in hyperglycemic condition. So it's actually they work both ways. Dina, you had other questions to ask too. Did 
Christina, are you there? Uh, Dr. Sadeva, another question she wants to Yes, there she is. Uh, how deadly and widespread is the combination of both the, disease, the diseases for Indians? I think uh, uh, that you said uh, the percentage. But if you can elaborate more. And uh, is it true that the diabetes by itself triples the risk of developing TB and adversely affects yes. disease presentation and treatment and outcomes? Yeah, that's true. Diabetes, uh, uh, diabetics have almost uh, three times chances of developing the tuberculosis compared to the uh, general population. The outcomes of uh, TB in diabetics are also poor. That has also been, we have seen that on the programmatic basis also. If your diabetes is not well controlled, you are likely to uh, see adverse outcomes of TB treatment. Okay. Uh, Tina, do you have any more questions or can we move on to the next uh, participant? No, just uh, carry on. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, Nanette, would you like to ask your question? N Nanette, she's a journalist from Philippines. Nanette, mm -hmm. are you there? Yeah, yeah, hi, good evening. Yes, would you please, evening, would you like to ask your question? Yeah, I was about to ask, um, isn't it that Latin TB is more, uh, or is often more found in developing countries like Philippines and India? Um, is there a possibility of pushing with a uh, diagnosis or treatment treatment among people with Latin tuberculosis in order to prevent development of diabetes? Well, I'm not very sure about this uh, answer on a scientific basis. Yeah, latent TB is definitely seen more in a country like India than Philippines. That's where they say about one third of the uh, global population is infected with TB personally, whereas in India and Philippines maybe almost a half of the population may be infected with the TB bacilli. Having said that, uh, whether latent TB fuels uh, diabetes uh, in a, to a flooded condition, I'm not sure, and I would not like to respond. I mean, I would not like to uh, give an answer on which I'm not sure. But the association seems remote here. Yeah. Nanette, are you there or? Uh... Nanette, more questions? Uh, Nanette had one more question to ask uh, Dr. Sajdeva. And she, uh, she wants to know if the efficacy of TB drugs, do they diminish by taking uh, diabetes drug? A very common drug is met metformin. Uh, so will, uh, taking metformin, does it diminish the efficacy of TB drugs? And are there any new? It no, it does not diminish the efficacy of TB drugs. So we can take metformin and uh, TB drugs together. The efficacy does not get reduced. Uh, and uh, the TB drugs will not to reduce, uh, vice versa also will not happen. It doesn't happen. Okay. And uh, another question from Nenit was, where does this dual epidemic take the research agenda? Where does this dual epidemic take the research agenda to? Yes, so there is yes. a lot of uh, actually focus now on TB diabetes. Having actually seen tasted success with TB HIV collaborative activities and also uh, globally seeing plateauing of TB case detection, the TB program uh, and also the diabetes program both are looking at now how to increase the uh, case notification on both diseases and, and tackle them on a public health way. So TB is now uh, very uh, looking at these uh, critical diseases, I mean, uh, what clinical at risk uh, diseases where incidence of TB increases more to screen these populations selectively and diagnose TB early. So we are targeting diabetics, uh, even other occupational uh, lung diseases like silicosis, uh, pneumoconiosis, and other clinically at risk, so those who are immunocompromised to see to get an incremental and early case detection of TB. Similarly, the diabetes program is also uh, targeting other uh, or leveraging on other disease control programs to reach to more and more uh, of population and notify more and more and manage more and more cases. So uh, having said that, the research is now focused on 
how to operationalize uh, besides the research on the molecular uh, or the cellular basis of both diseases and how they interact with each other at the cellular level, like the question Nanette asked on latent TB. So there is a lot of research going on at the cellular level, how latent TB can affect diabetes, how diabetes can affect latent TB. So they, they, there are many questions which are being ans answered at a molecular level. Besides that, the programs are also trying to answer these questions at the operational level. How can two disease programs collaborate? How can one program leverage on the strengths of the other program? So there's a lot of operational research is going on. We are also conducting uh, operational research on TB diabetes arena in, in India also. Okay. Uh, thank you. We have uh, a correspondent from Kenya, Joseph. Joseph, are you there? Would you like to ask your question? Joseph, hello. So, uh, you can maybe show you. Uh, yes, I can, I can ask. Yes, he, uh, his question is that how do you propose integration of diabetes and TB in, in developing countries where the problem of the co epidemic is more and uh, we have low, they are low resource settings as well? Dr. Sajdeva, you are doing a wonderful job in India at least, so, but uh, what is the message to so carry the, forward? Uh, similar to the TB HIV uh, model of uh, integrating two diseases, like uh, the model is that first you reduce the burden of TB among diabetics by active case search of tuberculosis among diabetics, early identification of symptoms, referring them early, diagnosing them early and treating them appropriately. The second is uh, diagnose diabetes early among TB patients. So almost half of the TB patients have diabetes which is known to them. There is other, another half which do not know that they have diabetes and if they are diagnosed early during the course of their TB treatment, not only they will be able to manage their diabetes well, they will also improve the outcomes of TB treatment. So one is that uh, in both the disease programs, you try to find the other disease. And the third uh, uh, mode of collaboration is through health system strengthening for both the diseases. So that's infection, infection control bias across settings where you have TB and diabetes so that there are less chances of uh, getting uh, co-infection. And for diabetes in particular, uh, promote healthy lifestyle, promote healthy nutrition, uh, advice about dietary habits, about uh, how to prevent obesity. So these are the measures which are being uh, uh, taken on an intersectoral coordination basis. So basically three broad areas of uh, cooperation between TB and uh, diabetic, pretty much similar on similar line on TB HIV uh, uh, collaborative activities. Thank you, Doctor. We have Roger Paul uh, from the Health Times East Africa who is based in Uganda. Uh, before I put his question up, he has a very interesting comment to make and I also agree with what, what he's saying. Uh, he yes. says that uh, as a person who has been doing TB advocacy globally, he finds that mm -hmm. in sub-Saharan Africa, TB is regarded as a disease of the poor and diabetes is regarded as a disease of the rich. And this myth is quite popular and it's interesting that the two diseases have proven to impact on each other, letting the poor and the rich come together. <laughs> I mean, myths are myths. Actually, in India also we have a myth yes. that TB yes. affects only the poor. But right. if you look at the celebrity endorsements, and uh, I don't want to name celebrities, but people from all walks of life are now coming out and openly claiming that, that they had TB at some point of time. Mm -hmm. So TB spares no one, rich or poor. Similarly, uh, diabetes though uh, considered to be a disease of affluence, we also see diabetics among poor also. I mean, the uh, type 2 diabetes may be more it's related to your uh, lifestyle, etc. But type 1 diabetes uh, has a uh, uh, mean of uh, transmission which is beyond your lifestyle, etc. So we see both, both, even type 2 we see uh, among poor also. So type 1 you can see in any class of society, type 2 also is seen among poor. So myths actually remain as... Uh, myths and, and they continue to uh, remain there for centuries even when you have evidence to the contrary. Right. So, uh, so Paul has a very, uh, Roger Paul has a very relevant question 
and he says I'm wondering yeah. if there is a me media agenda for this co epidemic in charting a global public health response so uh, I think this question is not to me this should be to the media <laughs> Uh, no, sure, but, but it, what, what is the government of India doing? <laughs> no, we, we are actually uh, now pushing with all uh, comorbidities. Uh, maybe it's not uh, found way to the media agenda as per se, but yes, uh, when we talk of media, I, I refer to this as an audience. But there is a selective group of audience which is the high risk group. So all our healthcare providers are an audience for me. Then I reach out to them for TB, diabetes, comorbidities. So maybe we are not reaching to the general population per se for TB diabetes uh, comorbidity as of now because uh, the program for non-communicable disease is currently evolving and it's currently only in 180 districts across the uh, country. So it's about roughly about a fourth of countries implementing non-communicable disease program for diabetes. Once they scale up to the entire country, we'll take it up as an agenda. I mean. It's too uh, early to build expectation. Let's do your, our groundwork first and get entrenched into the business of managing both the collaborative activities well before we raise the uh, demand for services. So we have to first establish the, a service delivery mechanism per se, ensure that everything is placed and then uh, raise demand for services. But yes, the demand for services is being raised among the healthcare providers. So that's the agenda. Uh, we have another question from Almas Shamim from the of, from MSF. Uh, okay. Dr. Uh, Dr. Sajdeva, he thanks you for your informative presentation and wants to know how will the government ensure that diabetes management is carried out and ensured among TB patients in districts where the NPCD CS program is not functional. By when does the government expect a nationwide coverage? So again, uh, I talked to my counterparts in NPCDCS and they say uh, within this plan they should expand the program to the entire country. So another maybe one and a half years uh, they should scale up. Okay, that, that's good news. Uh, Nenet from Philippines uh, is asking another question. What do you think is the meaningful role of community-based organizations, community-based NGOs in averting this or dealing with this dual crisis? So uh, CBOs have a uh, large role to play. I mean, uh, they can uh, do uh, literacy at the community level. So community literacy, there's a lot of roles in CBOs can play in uh, community literacy. Also, empowering community to take care of uh, their own health I mean, demand for services, reach out to uh, decision makers, advocate for services. A lot of role uh, CBOs can play, like in uh, TV control program, HIV control program, we have seen uh, CBOs changing the way the program deliver their services. Similarly, for TB diabetes, they can, uh, they should play an uh, active role and bring it on the same level as the TB, HIV comorbidities are being managed. Uh, uh, Dr. Sisdeva, I have a question. Uh, sure. Will, uh, will the, uh, we are, you must be going to this Global TB Diabetes Summit uh, uh, in Bali. Uh, India must be represented there. Uh, will it help in raising awareness and breaking program silos as the, uh, you are doing at your level a lot to break the silos. Is, it, is that going to be? Forward. All these uh, global summits are uh, very good advocacy platforms and they do help in yes, uh, uh, breaking uh, the silos and actually universalizing the or uh, reaching out to the, uh, even decision makers and policy makers and then uh, expanding the reach of the programs. Definitely yes. Thank you. I would ask the participants once again if anybody wants to ask more questions please send them using the chat function or by raising your the virtual hand if there are more questions to come. Uh, we have one question from Timothy. Uh, okay. He wants to know, Dr. Sajdeva, from your record, are there incidents of uh, TB diabetes co-infection involving children? Uh, 
TB diabetes co infection involving children. Uh, in children, uh, in children. Data of hand, uh, but I can get back to uh, Timothy okay. on it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay, so we can we can, uh, we can send the answer back. back. Huh, you can send the answer, we will share it uh, with Timothy. Sure, okay. sure. Send it. Uh, any more questions to come? If you want to ask again, I'm repeating, you can use the chat function or raise the virtual hand. Tina, Tina wants to know, Doctor. Uh, Tina, do you want to ask your question yourself, or should I ask? Tina? Yeah. yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we yeah, can. Yeah. I, I just want to know, uh, after the slash in India's uh, healthcare budget, uh, mm -hmm. is the ambitious tuberculosis control program facing trouble? No, no, no. I mean, uh, deep, uh, TB control program has not seen actually budget cuts per se. Uh, moreover, uh, with the disease flexi pool system coming in, we can dip into the uh, budgets of other programs. So we are implementing our uh, policies and other things as per our uh, plans. Yeah. TB is the only program which has escaped with the budget cuts. Nenet, you wanted to ask another question? Nenet, are you there? I would like to... Yes. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, please yeah. ask. I would like to ask if there are cases, if there are cases of diabetes with tuberculosis as well and HIV infection. So what is the problem, and also what is the probability of developing diabetes among HIV positive patients? So there is a good probability of developing diabetes among HIV positive patients. The specific instances I can share with uh, all of you on, uh, if you send me the questions on email, because these are very specific questions and refer to specific this thing. Uh, on a programmatic basis, we have not seen uh, many cases of diabetes, TB, HIV, but yes, there is a, these th three can gel very well. Uh, I mean, HIV is in immunocompromised state, diabetes is in immunocompromised state, they can all gel very well and there must be a few cases, but for that I have to go back to the state level and uh, look at records in more detail. I can get with details uh, sometimes later on in email. Yeah, uh, Nanette, uh, are you there? Any, any more, Nanette? Yes, Nenit must be there. Okay. Hello. So, maybe yeah, yeah, so I'm still I'm here. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Let Nenit send me a mail. I'll get the more data on this. Okay. Any, any more questions? Virtual hand chat function. You can use any. If there, or you, or you can send your questions later on. Uh, by mail and we will pass it on to Dr. Sajdeva and get his expert comments and expert advice on it. On it. Uh, thank you Dr. Sajdeva, thank you very much. Thank you, for and thank you Citizen News Services and all those uh, who participated. And, and uh, thank, uh, thank, you the, thank you participants, thanks everybody. And uh, so now we end the webinar and we will send the webinar recordings for the participants. We will send the webinar recording to you very soon. Thank you. Okay, thank you.